Hi, I'm Magnus Hitstem for the, the Developer Show, and we are here at the TensorFlow Dev Summit, and I'm standing here with Chris Latner. Hello, Chris. Hi, Magnus. So, Chris, you are actually one of the original founders of the Swift language, is that correct? That's true. I started as a nights and weekends project, and it grew to something a little bit bigger than that. That's absolutely amazing. And you just had a talk on TensorFlow and Swift that may be surprising to some people. How does these two things, how did they get together? Uh, well, it turns out that Swift has some really interesting capabilities that most other languages don't have. And so one of the, the neat things about Swift is it was designed from the very beginning with the idea of spanning all the way from systems programming to all the way up to scripting languages. And it turns out that TensorFlow is really a sweet spot for that because you want to be able to program TensorFlow like a scripting language and be able to use high-level abstractions, but you also care about low-level performance as well. And so Swift is really well positioned to fit that. Mm. Beyond that, Swift is a great language because it supports the kind of compi compiler analysis and all the deep internal stuff that makes it possible to do what we're doing with Swift for TensorFlow. And it's very modern in syntax, compact, yeah. and it has all the constructs that you would expect. Uh, absolutely. So when Swift was started in 2010. So it's not that old by language standards. And so one of the great things about that is it gets to build on all the best things that have been learned that are modern techniques in programming languages. Super cool. So I think most people, or you developers out there, they, you associate Swift with iOS development. But this has nothing to do with iOS development, right? right? Absolutely. Swift is an open source language. And people use it for server development and a lot of other things that are beyond iOS as well. And so this is just a great way to express tensor, tensor computations and be able to build your machine learning algorithms in a natural way where the compiler can help you write your code. It can mm -hmm. detect errors for you. Mm -hmm. It can make your life better so that you, uh, you know, can focus on getting the job done instead of trying to fight through the framework and trying to deal with mm -hmm. typical problems. Super cool. So I guess the question on everyone's mind is, how can I get involved in this? How can I use Swift with TensorFlow? Oh, that's, that's really easy. So it's still a very early stage process, project, but we're op opening our open source project in the next month. So in the month of April, you can sign up. At that time, we're publishing just not just the code, but also white papers. And we're also allowing open development. So you too can contribute to the project. And so if you're interested in that, you can go to tensorflow.org slash community slash Swift. Super cool. So it's going to be really interesting to see what you developers create with Swift and TensorFlow. I'm Magnus Hitzten. This is Chris Slatner. We're at uh, the TensorFlow Dev Summit for Developer Show.